On this episode of Trying Not to Sink, we installed two 300 watt solar panels on the roof of the flybridge. And best of all, we got them for free. Stay tuned and we'll show you how. My name is Ed. I'm an ex-musician, turned politician, turned accountant, who now imagines himself a sea captain. This is Lynn. She's an ex-model, retired photographer, and the love of my life. Three years ago, we bought a boat. No experience and completely clueless. Since then, we have traveled over 10,000 miles along the Atlantic coast and the Bahamas. Join us as we continue the adventure, exploring exciting places, meeting new people, and having the time of our lives while trying not to sink. There are a lot of different manufacturers who make solar panels. Some are very costly, some are reasonably priced. They all seem to be based on the relatively similar components uh, made from uh, just a handful of companies that actually make the, uh, the cells themselves. Now we decided to go with the Rich Solar Panel. There are people who swear by the LGs or the Panasonics or the Renegies, and we watch dozens of reviews uh, on YouTube, read a bunch of articles, and it doesn't really seem to be a consensus on what the best solar panel is. We've seen videos where the rich solar panel outperforms, say, the Panasonic, which costs 50% more. So being that there was no real consensus, it made no sense for us to spend a lot of extra money on premium price panels when we really didn't see the benefit of it. Now the rich 200 watt uh, monocrystalline solar panels are 24 volt. Now 24 volt was also very important to us. We're trying to keep the amperage down uh, on the wires that were running through the boat. And we also picked up one of these uh, Victron MPPT solar controllers. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit pricey compared to other solar controllers, but uh, it is well made and it actually matches up perfectly with our Victron inverter, so we know there's not going to be any compatibility issues. It is a 30 amp controller, even though we're going to wire these two panels in series, it will only run about maybe 6 to 8 amps, so this is kind of overkill, but it gives us a lot of room to expand if we want to. Uh, another reason uh, we went with them was size. For the size of a 200 watt, they worked out perfectly to fit on the flybridge of our boat. Now some of the reviews I've watched of Rich, where they've outperformed uh, some of the more expensive panels, were very good, but there was some issue of quality uh, of the build. Uh, ha however, having opened this, I can tell you that I'm very impressed with the quality of the build. The back panel, uh, the Caulking seams are, uh, are, are they're just absolutely perfect. The installation of the, uh, the cables here, everything looks right on the money. The, uh, the joints, perfect. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very impressed. Another thing I saw that people were concerned about was the packaging, but I found the packaging to be perfectly fine. It is cardboard, but it's aligned with foam. In any case, they arrived in perfect condition and we're excited to get them on the boat. Now, when we were looking at solar panels originally, I had thought about getting 300 watt panel. Uh, I, I, I changed my mind and decided to go to the 200 watt panels. The main reason was price. It, it wasn't so much the price per watt for 300. Once you get to the 300 watt solar panels, because of the size and weight, they will only ship them through freight. So it was adding $75 per panel just to purchase two panels. Now, I got these um, through, through Amazon. They, they were shipped for free through Prime. Uh, my total cost on this was uh, $190 each plus tax. Now, when it comes to installation, I decided to make my own brackets. I purchased this angled aluminum. I uh, got this someplace on Amazon. Uh, it was only, I think they were about $10 each. I'm going to cut these into 10-inch sections and use those as the as the mounts. Now they do have ready-made mounts for solar panels like this. They, they call them like Z brackets. The issue is the Z brackets are kind of small and I plan to install this using the 3M uh, VHB tape and I wanted a lot of surface area for the tape. I, I was a little bit skeptical when I saw that people were installing these type of solar panels on boats with this tape. However, I watched a number of videos and not just videos of boaters installing it, I saw plenty of RVers using this tape to install the solar panels on their RV. Now an RV is going to barrel down the highway at 70-80 miles per hour. Hurricane force winds. So I figure if it can withstand that type of wind, it can withstand what's going to happen on our boat. And it's going to make it a lot easier and I don't have to drill holes on the top of my flybridge roof.
to our flybridge is just slightly curved. It's almost perfectly flat. The distance, uh, the width of this solar panel from one end to the other, the curve on our roof makes it about a sixteenth of an inch lower on the outside than it would be on the inside. So when I mount these brackets, I'm mounting them flush over there and I'm mounting them about a sixteenth of an inch up on this side to compensate. And you're keeping in mind where your plugs are? Yeah. Okay. Good job. Don't drop it! getting dark out. Mm -hmm. I think it's about <laughs> time to take a break. I already got my wine poured. And here is the finished installation. I haven't made the connections yet because I don't want them to go live until I'm done running the wires. But I was able to run them up and we cut a hole into the arch. And then we bought one of these little attachments to make it waterproof as it goes through. I installed the solar charge controller and connected the cables coming from the solar panels. I installed a circuit breaker between the controller and the batteries so that I would have a disconnect if needed. You might notice that from there, I connected the output cables directly to the batteries. Actually, the positive cable should be connected to a bus bar at the fuse block, and the negative should be connected to a bus bar at the shunt. I ordered two bus bars online, but unfortunately, they did not arrive in time, so I did this as a temporary connection to test the system. I will also be installing a ground cable from the inverter to the shunt bus bar as well. The final part of this installation will be programming the inverter with the lithium battery parameters. The solar charger is Bluetooth enabled as well, so I'm able to monitor what's going on with it. As you can see, we're only getting about 30, 32 watts coming through right now. That is because here in Philadelphia it is heavily overcast and we are in the shade even if it wasn't overcast. So we're getting a little bit of power out of it. Uh, it looks like it's somewhere in the 60 to 70 volts coming through, uh, a half an amp. And uh, well, I can't wait to see it on a sunny day, see what we get. I hooked up the communication cable to the Vitron and ran it over to the laptop uh, to work on the settings. Now you're required to purchase, I don't know if you can see it here, I don't have very good light on. That is probably my only disappointment with Victron so far. I had to purchase this separately for $68. I think it really should have just came with the inverter itself. Because without that, 
you can only do some minor programming using jumper switches. But with this adapter, you can use the computer, as you can see I have set up right now. And with the computer, I can go in and change all the settings that I need to change to match it up with the batteries that I have. Now that everything's installed and working, let's go over all the numbers. I'll show you how I got the solar panels for free, and if you haven't already done so, check out last week's video where we did the installation of the inverter and the batteries. The main components of the battery inverter system were as follows. The Victron inverter for $12.85. The Valance batteries were $438 each for a total of $876. The battery, monitor, and shunt were 207 The USB adapter to program the inverter was $68. Miscellaneous cables, fuses, etc. came to $150. This brings our total to $2,586 for the installation of the inverter and the batteries. Based on our experience from our trip in 2019, we're probably going to use this inverter about 600 hours. That's how much time we put on the generator during the last trip, so we think it'll probably be similar. Since the average fuel cost in 2019 was $3.25 per gallon, we're estimating we're going to save somewhere around $1,950 this coming season on fuel. Based on that, we should recoup our investment in about one and a half years. The cost for the solar panels were $192 each, or $384 total. We paid $226 for the solar charger, $50 for the wire, $33 for brackets, and another $50 for miscellaneous connectors and VHB tape, etc. So the addition of the solar panels added $743 to this project cost. By installing 400 watts of solar panel up on the flybridge, we're going to greatly reduce the amount of time that we need to run our generator. Now, we will still need to run it for things such as air conditioning and occasionally the charge of batteries, but it will reduce it by a lot. It will also enable us to avoid paying that $15, $25 electric fee when we do transient slips. Further, it'll probably reduce the amount of metered electric that we use at our home slip since we will be occasionally using that to supplement the electric that we're paying for. Now, it's hard to quantify what the savings will be from these things, but we imagine it'll be another $500 to $1,000 a year. Now, let's talk about how we got the free solar panels. Let me qualify this by saying, although I do own an accounting firm, I am not a CPA. And what I'm about to tell you is my opinion and how the tax laws affect me personally. You should talk to your own accountant to find out if you meet the criteria and whether this tax credit works for you. 2020, there is a 26% credit for renewable energy, including solar power installations. Now, they have to be on your primary residence or your secondary residence. Since our boat meets the criteria as a second residence, we are eligible for a 26% tax credit for the cost of installing solar or renewable energy. Now, there is a qualification on that. Uh, you can only write off the cost of batteries if, in fact, those batteries are being powered at least 75% by solar panels. Now, since we're not sure we're going to meet that criteria, we're going to remove the cost of the batteries from our total installation costs when we calculate the 26%. And I should also add that sales tax count. So the sales tax that I paid on the products that we purchased is also part of that calculation for the 26%. Unfortunately, I can't write off labor because I did the work myself and you're just not allowed to do that. Grand total was $3,329. Now here's the free part. Subtract the battery cost of $875 Add in the sales tax, which was $147 in my case. Multiply everything by 26% and you get a tax credit of $676. That is enough to cover the cost of the solar panels, the charge controller, and the wire. That's how we got our solar panels and the solar charger for free. If you have any questions, please comment below. We respond to all questions and we hope you found this video helpful. Happy holidays, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone that follows us, our Patreons. Uh, Chelsea and Nick. And I hope everyone has a happy and prosperous new year. And may 2021 be better than 2020, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays!
Hi everyone, happy holidays. <laughs> Stuck. Everyone, happy holidays. I'd like to thank wait hi everyone happy holidays i'd like to find i mean i'm not I'd like hey <laughs> hi hi there people 